adults refer to as an irritable bowel syndrome. Wait a minute, kids get that too? In kids, a group of people call that their own name, chronic recurrent abdominal pain, or CRAP, uh, and some people just say it doesn't exist, period. But I can say with complete certainty that it definitely exists. And it happens exactly the same way in kids as it does in adults. And in fact, if you ask the adults with irritable bowel when they start to experience the symptoms, a large proportion of them will recognize that they've had it since they were kids. So once we know that, it's not surprising that we can pick it up if we look for it in children. And is there a treatment? There is a very, very effective treatment and uh, it's simple. Eliminate the foods that are causing the problem. Well, I don't know what the foods are causing the problem. Well, start out with using just some common sense. Fried foods, fast foods, junk foods, candy, excessive amount of carbohydrate, they are all foods that... So my kid is down to one apple. It's, no, we give the kids fruit, we give the kids vegetables, we give the kids healthy foods, and... You mean we're going back to the other diet that you recommended for kids with constipation almost? They're absolutely, you want those children to have a high fiber. Why? Because oftentimes with the irritable bowel, they will be constipated. What distinguishes those children from the others is that you have periods when a certain food is going to cause diarrhea. So a typical child will have to rush away from the food to go to the toilet certain days. Other days, not have one bowel movement the entire 24 hours. Was irritable bowel syndrome around the 1700s? Irritable bowel syndrome was certainly less common when people ate proper healthy foods than it is these days. However, what we know is that why can one child eat all this junk food and another child not is because there is a little individuality with regard to two parameters. One is how much gas does the junk food create in a child versus another child and second is how sensitive is the given child to a given amount of distension uh, versus another. Now we know Identical twins? Would both twins have it? I don't think that we have good information to definitively answer that question simply because of the fact that the majority of the workers in this field, the researchers in this field, are caught up with utilizing different types of pharmacologic treatments to, to work through these kind of problems as opposed to looking at just strictly doing this approach that I've outlined. Okay. The 